from NBC 15, this is Breaking News. We do begin with breaking news. Let's go live to Madison Mayor Paul Soglin on the DA's decision not to charge a Madison police officer in the shooting death of Tony Robinson. Why do you think the protests here have been peaceful as opposed to something like Ferguson? What's different about Madison? I'd, I'd be hard pressed to to go through the description. I think uh, part of it is the nature of social and economic concerns within the community that we've addressed prior to this incident. I think part of it is the um, the training and the nature of police work in our communities. Part of it might have been just luck. How does street protests resonate with you? Well, as somebody who's got a little experience in the area, um, there's, there's rules of engagement. And I think it's very important, going back uh, to, to what inspired us, which was the work of Dr. King, to understand that while protesting, there are certain responsibilities. Responsibilities to the larger community and responsibilities to other protesters. And that means uh, that there's always a challenge. And there's, there's been a challenge for decades, not just in this country, but all over the world, where occasionally you get some folks who use the larger cover of the committed nonviolent protesters to engage in activity which poses a danger to the entire community. And that is something where we, we need to be constantly vigilant. You said there was a bit of luck involved? In, in what way? Because I can't explain it all. I, luck always enters into these things. Now, what about blocking streets? Are protesters going to be allowed to continue to block streets? It depends on the circumstances. It depends on the street. It depends on the time of day. It depends upon whether or not we've got an ambulance or an emergency vehicle that needs to get through. And you just heard from Madison Mayor Paul Soglin on the DA's decision to not file charges or press charges for Tony Robinson's death on Officer Matt Kenny. Obviously, you could tell Mayor Paul Soglin just wants peaceful protests mm -hmm. all over the city. That's the important thing at this point. And he's expecting it yep. to be legal. You know, it bears mentioning, too, it's one thing that we see press conferences in a controlled environment, mm -hmm. but out on the street, that's where it's going to matter. And we should mention that volunteers from 100 black men and the Urban League, they are also out on the streets. Their sole responsibility, they said, is to watch protesters and make sure everything stays safe and legal. I think that's the important thing at this point right now is making sure that everyone just stays peaceful on the street. It's your right to go on the street and protest, but just keep them peaceful. And for that now, let's go live now to Lindsey Branwall. She is with the group that spearheaded protests over the death of Tony Robinson. Lindsey. The march started at about 1030 from this house where Robinson was shot. Now, you, the marchers are out of sight by now, but they're on their way to the courthouse to put on a mock trial. It was about 9.30 when everyone started gathering on Willie Street. And uh, from about a, over 100 people, they were making signs. They were starting cheers and chants before starting on their two-mile walk to the courthouse. Now, police are in front of and behind this group. They're blocking off streets on their way from Williamson Street to South Hamilton. They set up uh, what they call peacekeepers to be liaisons between the police and the protesters. But Young, Gifted and Black has asked that the protesters have absolutely no contact with the police throughout this march. Reporting live on Madison's Near East Side, Lindsey Branwall, NBC 15 News. Lindsay, thank you. Tony Robinson's family says while a decision has been made, the fight is not over. His mother said she's not surprised by yesterday's decision, and she will be exploring other legal options to bring Officer Kenny to court. They thought that this battle was over. What they did not realize in the night that they took my son from me is that I am not the type to be defeated. 
and I am not but just beginning to be to fight. Amen. She also added that she doesn't think the investigation was thorough enough. This is your weather authority forecast. Quite a change from yesterday. Plenty of sunshine throughout the area, although we still have the cool temperatures. Right now, it's just 50 degrees with wind uh, very light at this time due to a high pressure system in place. Only 49 in Baraboo and Beaver Dam, but currently 54 degrees in Mineral Point. Low temperatures this morning started out at the freezing mark for Baraboo and Lone Rock. It looks like we won't be quite as cold overnight tonight. But for this afternoon, the sunshine continues with a high temperature up to 63 degrees. It looks Looks like the clouds will roll in overnight with rain on the way for tomorrow. I'll have more details on your forecast in just a bit. Amy, thank you so much. And now the news in our state capitol today. A bill that would restrict products available to food stamp recipients heads to the full assembly for a vote. It would require food stamp recipients to use at least two-thirds of their monthly benefits to buy healthy foods. And by the way, those users would be barred from buying things like crab, lobster, shrimp, and other shellfish. And in our continuing coverage now, a visitation will be held this afternoon and tomorrow for the father and daughter killed in the shooting in Menasha. Funeral services will then be held tomorrow night for 33-year-old Jonathan Stoffel and his 11-year-old daughter, Olivia. Adam Benthal of Appleton was also killed along with the gunman, Sergio Valencia del Toro. Madison police need your help today to identify a robbery suspect. Please take a look at your screen now. The man you see in this surveillance photo allegedly robbed the Associated Bank on Gammon Road yesterday. Detectives believe the man is also responsible for two other recent holdups at Associated Bank branches. General Motors is recalling nearly 470,000 Chevy Malibu cars. The recall involves Malibus from the 2011 and 2012 model years. A cable can separate as people move in the seats. Dealers will inspect the cable and replace the affected parts if necessary. Meantime, Toyota and Nissan are adding millions of cars to their airbag recalls. The new recalls impact more than 6.5 million vehicles equipped with airbags made by the Takata Corporation. The Toyota recall impacts 35 different models produced between 2003 and 2007. Nissan's recall affects a range of models produced between 2004 and 2008. You can check to see if your vehicle is included in the recalls by heading to our NBC15.com website and clicking on news links. Making news now around the nation, at least six people are dead and dozens of others injured after a busy Amtrak commuter train derailed last night outside of Philadelphia. Now investigators are on the scene as rescue crews continue to search for unaccounted for passengers. NBC's Chris Pallone joins us from Philadelphia now with the latest. From the air, the morning light shows the violent aftermath of the deadly derailment. Several of the commuter train cars strewn on their sides across the North Philly tracks. Amtrak train 188 left Washington, D.C. on its scheduled route to New York Tuesday night when it derailed shortly after 9 p.m. We are heartbroken at what has happened here. Uh, we've not experienced anything like this uh, in modern times. Five people were found dead on the scene. A sixth died overnight. Chest injuries. Chest yeah, injuries. Yeah, massive chest injury. Can't release the identity or the sex of the victim now because the next of kin doesn't know yet. More than 140 of the train's 238 passengers were taken to nearby hospitals with injuries. Most of the, the injuries were fractures. We have eight in critical condition still. Three went to the operating room last night immediately. Passengers on board the train described violent shaking as people in luggage flew around the inside of the cars seconds before a sudden stop. Those who could helped others escape the wreck, kicking out windows and forcing open doors. All of a sudden, yeah. I felt myself fly up in the train, sit back down, move forward, move back, move forward, move back, and there was just a loud, loud crash. A GO team of NTSB investigators is now on the scene looking for any clues as to what may have triggered the derailment. Whether or not the train went into emergency braking, whether those brakes were applied, or whether there was a failure of some part or piece of equipment. And so they'll be looking at all of that really closely. They'll be examining the human, the machine, and the environment. An examination and investigation into this crash that will likely last months. Chris Pallone, NBC News, Philadelphia.